Ah, the skeletal system to which we owe many things. If it weren't for your bones, you probably wouldn't be able to do this. And you'd probably die from things like these. Plus, you probably won't have enough blood and enough minerals to keep you alive. That is very, very difficult to demonstrate. So I'm just gonna say it. The skeletal system is quite the powerhouse for a lot of things for your body. It's what enables you to be who you are, to look the way you do. As we get to know the skeletal system of many different kinds of vertebrates, we first have to be familiar with a few things. One is that the skeletal system, at least morphologically, you can divide it into two general parts. That would be your axial skeletal system and your appendicular skeletal system. The parts of the axial skeletal system would include your skull, your vertebrae, as well as your ribs, while the parts of the appendicular skeletal system would include the pectoral and the pelvic girdles, and of course the associated forelimbs and hilimbs. As we go through the different organ systems of your vertebrates, we will be using this book as your main reference. This is Comparative Vertebrate Anatomy by Libby Henrietta Hyman. The Bible! of comparative anatomy. Many of the manuals that you will see thereafter are sort of based on this. It has that old book smell, it has the, the old font, and oh, like, 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 look, it's just words, just words. That's why we will supplement these with a few more contemporary atlases. The ones by Deulis and Pulera, as well as the one by Philip Cochran. When you finally open your atlases and lab manuals, at first glance you're gonna be like, oh, There's so many words! Oh my god, there's so many new words! However, rest assured, some of those words are actually recurring. You're going to see them again and again and again, and that is because they are actually descriptors of what that thing you're looking at is. Is it a bump? Is it a depression? So to help you with that, let's turn it into a song! Sing with me! The head, trochlea, and condyles are projections that form joints. Processes, crests, and spines are often muscle attachment points. The other nubs are tubercles and tuberosities, and if you see it in the femur, you can call it a trochanther. Some depressions on the bones are the fossa and fovea. Cavities and notches pair up with head and trochlea. A facet isn't deeper, it is actually quite flatter. And the foramen's a hole, and the canal is one that's longer. Yay! And that's it! Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed the song, because if not, it will be stuck in your head for the whole day, and maybe for the rest of the week, and that's just gonna suck. And so now, you may embark on the journey to get to know the skeletal system. You can just head over to the playlist that I made, or I can just leave a few videos right here for you to get started. Hope you guys have fun. Bye bye you. This book as your reference. Oh my god, old ass book. Cavities and notches pair up with head and trochlea. What's next? <laughs> The parts of the axial skeletal system would include your brain, your vertebrae, not the brain, god, the skull! <laughs> the parts of the axial skeletal system would include...